All right, so we're going to talk about 210.52. Remember, 210.52 in your code book. I'm going to be looking at the 2020 code changes, but I'm going to probably I'm going to be talking. I have the 2017 code and the 2020 code opened up, and I'm just going to give you a, a, an overview of what's uh, what's going on in this section over these two cycles. If you recall in 210.52, one of the changes, the larger big change that we did in the 17 code was we added the work surface uh, concept. Um, and we added that in 210.50, 210.50, as well as 210.52. So in 210.50, actually, 210.52, 210.52, we added or work surface. So you'll see in, in like uh, in C countertops and work surfaces, we have wall count, wall uh, countertop and work surface. So that was uh, one of the big changes that we did back in the 17 code. Now in the 2020 code, uh, we didn't change any of that. Our focus on 210.52 for the 2020 code was to address the islands and peninsulas and how we do the measurements for um, for the receptacle location in those applications. It's always a point of contention. If you recall what we did in the 17 code with regard to peninsulas and, outer, and countertops, we made some changes there that tried to address a concern on do you measure from the connecting edge? Do you not measure from the connecting edge? We took it uh, took a stab at trying to fix that in the 17 code. Didn't quite get there. In the 2020 code, we changed our entire philosophy. The philosophy on countertops and on our peninsulas and islands is around square footage. So basically what we fall, fell back to was calculate your area in square footage. And depending upon a, a uh, uh, so many every so many square foot you will have to provide a receptacle outlet now the the other discussion point that we had was where do we require the placement of those receptacle outlets in an island or peninsula and no matter what we came up with we didn't come up with a good idea on how to either mandate a specific location and not have a problem uh, because these locations are will change based upon the application, based upon the design. So what we ended up was doing was saying, on an island, we don't have any specific location whatsoever. We just simply say, look, calculate how many you need based upon the square footage, and then you put them wherever you, the owner, the designer, the cabinet maker decide they wanna put them. With regard to a peninsula, we have a requirement that a receptacle outlet be located um, within, I think it's 12 inches of, or six inches, 12, within 24 inches, two foot of the end. And I'm just looking for receptacle outlets shall be located in one or more of the following. On or above, uh, the countertop or work surfaces, so not more than 20 inches above the countertop or work surface. That's if you're looking at above. It says receptacle outlet assemblies listed for use in countertops or work surfaces shall be permitted to be installed in countertops or work surfaces. Those are your pop-ups or the um, the ones that are rated because we're, what we're concerned on a, on a countertop is a receptacle that's face up. Below the countertops or work surface, not more than 12 inches below the countertop or work surface. So if you have something that's installed underneath, we are specific on the distances there because you have to think about the, the cord hanging over the edge and plugging in. So we say uh, not be located where the countertop or work surface extends more than six inches beyond its support base. So there's some requirements there. And now what you can use are those wire mold type of things where multiple outlets on a strip. Um, See what else so that is in islands and peninsulas. Now it does say at least one receptacle outlet shall be provided for the first. Uh, now this is the calculation. So you're going to calculate your square footage and it says at least one receptacle outlet shall be provided for the first nine square foot or fraction thereof 
of the countertop or work surface, recept a receptacle outlet shall be provided for every additional 18 square foot or fraction thereof of the countertop. So you calculate your total square footage. You take the first nine square foot and, and you need a receptacle outlet for that. And then every additional 18 square foot. So if you have something that's 10 square foot, you need one, because it says a fraction thereof, you have one receptacle required for the first nine square foot and you have one more receptacle required uh, for the next 18, because it says, or fraction thereof. Now, you need at least one receptacle outlet shall be located within two foot of the outer end of a peninsula countertop or work surface. So now you have, this, this is the only place where you have an actual requirement for the placement. We're telling you exactly where to place this receptacle on that peninsula. Remember, at least one receptacle outlet shall be located within two foot of the outer end of a peninsula countertop or work surface, not an island, okay? Additional required receptacle outlets shall be permitted to be located as determined by the installer, designer, or owner, building owner. So what we're trying to do here is just give you some flexibility. We're saying, here's how you calculate the number now. And then you place one if it's a peninsula, one within two foot of the end, and then you pick where you want to put the rest. You can put them all next to each other. We don't, we're not specific. On an island, though, you can put them anywhere you want. Or you don't need one with two, within two feet of an end. Um, and, and I'll tell you, we went back and forth and back and forth with that. We had a home builder on our task group. We had uh, Nika, IBW represented. Uh, and this was the language that actually Nika brought to the table. And I think it uh, was something that everybody rallied around because at least it was it was familiar and it was easy. Now, the only other thing is uh, measurement. So you got to remember that when you're measuring, you're measuring from the wall when you're doing your square footage. So if you have a peninsula and it connects and it's something that's integrated, well, it's a peninsula, it's not an island, then you're going to measure your square footage from the wall, not the connecting edge. So that's an important piece of that, um, of that calculation. Um, for the purpose of this section, we're using multi-outlet assemblies. So that's that strip. Every 12 inches of multi-outlet assembly containing two or more receptacles installed in an individual or continuous lengths shall be considered to be one receptacle outlet. So the challenge we had there was when you're looking at the providing that receptacle, you have a, a wire mold that would go like say under the countertop, then what we had to do was say, if you're not gonna provide a receptacle outlet, you're gonna have one receptacle outlet, but you're gonna have multiple receptacles in a strip. How do we account for that? Um, because that could serve to meet the needs of multiple receptacle outlets. So what we came up with was every 12 inches is considered one receptacle outlet. Okay, so that was in uh, C. Uh, let's take a look. We have wall spaces, so that not not, not a major change there. Um, island and peninsula countertops. Uh, we went over receptacle outlet locations, and I believe that's really the major changes in two ten dot fifty two. Uh, again, it was around the peninsulas and islands. So if you ever, if you go through a code changes class with with any of the organizations out there, they're really going to hone in on how you calculate the the number of receptacle outlets for islands and peninsulas. Uh, that was the big change in the 2020 uh, National Electrical Code. So hopefully that gives you some insight on 210.52 for NEC 2020. All right. Thanks, and uh, hopefully that uh, this answers your questions or gives you a little bit of insight onto what was going on in that cycle.